this is the last song he's going to write myself. It's based on a true story. People say I'm a loser. Yeah. But I'm a different type of man. Life can be hard when a buddy really understands you, but I got myself a brand new plan. I'm gonna live a life that's civil and free. I ain't gonna try to please anybody but me. Gonna get what I want, do what I please. Get dirty, roll up my sleeves, and eat your pussy every morning. Eat your pussy every Saturday night. Smell it in the country, crazy baby, and I'll eat it like it's apple pie. No, it tastes like nothing to me except a sweet honey and the smell of the sea. Now I don't need no motherfucking ABC. I just go down and do what comes naturally. I sent some of you pulling away from me right now. Don't pull away from me. Now I love your pretty body and your pretty little mind. You up my mind nearly all of the time. Come to my place and eat for a bottle of wine. I have you calling out my name by a quarter to nine. My brother that's black, my lamb, I was blue. I know but it makes a blues like they used to do. Makes me get mad at my point of view. But there's a one thing I know I do better than you. Eat your pussy every other morning. Eat your pussy every Sunday night. Smell it from country, baby, baby. And I'll leave it like it's ever bad. Now it tastes like nothing for me except for. Sweet honey and the smell of the sea. Now I don't need no motherfucking ABC. I just go down and do what comes naturally. I don't need no motherfucking ABC. I just go down and do what comes naturally. Like I said, that song is based on a true story. Uh, up next, we got Patrick, everybody. Let's put our hands together for Patrick. Come on. Do you have hands? Go to your head. Yo. All right. Yo, okay. Uh, gosh, man, I really love your set, but at some point we really, really need during this hot and sweaty summer some um, beautiful women up here singing songs about how they love fellatio. <laughs> because you know, after all, you think at some point someone might want to return the favor. And it's, it's something to think about. So um, I think about the visibility thing now. Uh, can you hear my voice? It's off there. Okay, good. That's all I need to hear. Uh, 
my name is Patrick McCabe, and this is what I do. Earth. Earth. Fire. Air. Water. Truth. Aum la ra shanti Truth, love, peace. Peace, love, truth, my truths. <laughs> yeah, you for the audience. Entangled. Incessant demands of my time in tavern. Drunken lots are 86 at least. And last my way home freed of entanglements. My way home alone and untangled. I leave and have just left a tangled mess. My woven cord of stage and self with audience. Caught up with a microphone cord and stranded voice. On leaving stage, I nearly lost my written page. I create demand on time in coffee houses at least and last and chose to slaughter badly worded poem. I find myself freed of stage engagements. My untangled way home is clear to the tavern. A chance cycle of deals gone awry with time. I wish no more demands of my time in tavern. Tangled in my weaving mess of time, deeds, voice, and stage. Leaving coffee house, I nearly lost my loving home. My way home alone, rest love untangled. Leave behind my love poem page. My time, my tangled time alone in tavern. I leave to find my tangled page alone. My time on stage is not love spent alone. I leave to write my love pages and more. Our times alone with Paul on stage are lonesome. My twisted mess I cannot solve or endure alone. Um, thank you for in appreciating the uh, poem as it happened. I wonder what the hell happened with the game. Um, you have to tell me as soon as I am off the stage. The etymology in this case, as far as the term tangled, I actually like looked it up after I wrote the poem. Because as an amateur etymologist, I was concerned about getting the notes right. And I listened to the musicology of the etymology and origins. Tangle is a form of seaweed that gets caught up in your nets when you are trying to fish the Norse seas. Um, 
It's called tangle. It is an old Norse word meaning what happens to your nets that fucks them up so you cannot get a decent catch. Now, this thing doesn't mean anything to you whatsoever unless you happen to be a North Sea fisherman, in which case you got lost on the way home. You're in the wrong tavern. Ballard is Dock Bay, okay? Okay, okay now you got it. You're in the wrong place, but they still they serve booze here. So stick around. Uh, all in all, all I can really say anymore about life is because uh, poets are supposed to talk about life. I guess that's what it means. Um, it's not a bad day to for you. I, I didn't say it was a good day, but it's not a bad day for the toy. Ah, oh, the hell with it. Kill them all and let Sark god them out. Really, I found it is my calling in life. My dharma at the tender young age of 62, as they tell me at the senior center, oh, you're spring chicken. Don't worry about it. You won't understand yet. Uh, I, I can understand. That, um, 62... It is my dharma and calling in life on a weekly basis to bring blessings to a house of drugs. And I, I have to realize that actually the experience has prematurely aged me. First the accident where my ankle was crushed, and I'm really glad to be able to stand in front of you and be alive. And um, with the subsequent heart attack, because you might as well have a heart attack in a hospital if you're going to have one. Um, it has prematurely aged me. I can tell because of the way that I talk to people, and the way people talk to me, that young people talk about their newest tattoos and how heavily their fans shredded at that Blue Moon gig, even though there were only five people here and four of them were watching the game. Now, old people talk about, okay, their impending medical appointments, their medication lists, and um, their most recent operations. So my impending medical appointment is with my physical therapist. And I'm, I'm having a very hard time not having a crush on her because, like a concubine, I see her rarely and only by appointment. And I know in advance that she's going to cause me pain. She's not going to cause me emotional pain. She's very careful about that. But she's going to cause me physical pain that hurts so good. And I'm standing there, sitting there actually, barefoot on the examination table. And she's asking me the most innocent questions while sitting at my feet with her big beautiful eyes, she'll say, I'm going to yank on your foot really hard and cause you terrible pain. Is that all right? And all I can say is, oh, yes, please, of course. And I mean, like, oh, my God, that hurt. Oh, 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 now, could you please, oh, do it again, yes. And, and um, every time I am near this woman, I have a very hard time avoiding impure thoughts. Uh, I get near here and I hear the Velvet Underground playing in my head, and it's always Venus and Furs. Um, she's really sweet. Okay, now the medication list. Used to be when I was a young man, I was really proud of being able to say things off the top of my head, like dextral rotation, polarized light, isomer, lysergic sour, diethylamide, crystalline tartrate. Experimental run number 25. Thank you, Dr. Albert Hoffman. I'm really glad that you live on this planet. Or delta trans tetrahydrocannabinolic acid, which um, preferably we should smoke every day. Uh, these days, since the heart attack in the hospital, there's a whole new list of medications. And I'm going to say things like, 
acetaminophen, which is much cheaper than brand label Tylenol. Ask for the generic, please. Or gabapentin. Gabapentin is an amazing drug because it doesn't get you high. It has no discernible psychotropic effect. All it does is kill pain. So I say, gather, gather, pantin, gather, gather, hey, gather, gather, pantin, gather, gather, hey, and the nurses never got that joke somehow. Um, now, when it comes to the blood drugs, oh, they, they love me after my heart attack. Um, they gave me um, lisinopril, which is squares real, man, really squares real. It's actually a square tablet, so you can tell from the other ones. And my propylol, they take care of my high blood pressure, which is really easy to get when you're standing on a hot and sweaty stage on a sultry night. Then there is um, a corvastatin, because I refuse to give up rich food. I don't care if I had a heart attack in the hospital. I refuse to give up cheese and butter. I'm sorry. So they put me on statins. Uh, I've read recently there's only like two real problems with statins. One problem is that it can really wreak havoc with your memory. And I'll be damned if I can remember what the other one is. Uh, with that, oh, the, the killer drug, clopidogrel. Clopidogrel goes by the trade name of Clavix. And uh, Pyrex is really cool because it keeps the red blood cells from sticking to each other so I won't have another heart attack. However, for that reason, I just gave myself a bruise. And I could be bleeding here and I just gave myself another bruise. Um, I think about that classic heavy metal rock band because after the heart attack, I have metal in my heart. It doesn't mean that I saw Zepp at the Green Lake Aqua Theater in 1969 when I was 17 and they walked the world. I, I, that's true. But literally, I actually have metal in my heart. So they have to make my blood cells slide over each other so I bleed easy. And I think about that classic metal rock band, um, Bloody Plavix, and their album, um, Plavix, Bloody Plavix. And their great song, I Am Iron Pill. Which brings me to the last drug, my friend, Ferris Sulfate, because after all, I'm still anemic, but not in poetry. Okay, the last thing that Oldfield talked about after they talked about, okay, their impending medical visits and their medication list is the most recent surgery, which is when they put a piece of metal in my heart. And what happened was, I was already in the hospital because my ankle had been crushed by a car, and they cut me on pills. They don't give you pot in the hospital. They kept me on pills. And um, I was talking with a couple of nurses in a casual conversation, and they said, Patrick, you're having a heart attack. I said, no, I'm not. I know what a heart attack is. I'm not, I've seen heart attacks on TV. They show them in movies, right? I'm not having a heart attack. And they said, Patrick, I said, okay, I have a little tension across my chest, a little dislocated pain in my foot. I go through this all the time. I'm not having a heart attack. They said, we're calling the cardio team to make sure that you had a heart attack. I said, don't waste their time. I'm not having a heart attack. Heart attacks are for old people. They flop around on the ground, and you have to take these pads and shock them back into life. I'm not having a heart attack. And then the cardio team is right in front of me because they're really quick in hospital. They're cliche. They have a heart attack, they're in a hospital like this. They do the EKG on me, and they have a heart attack. And they say, you just had a heart attack. Next thing I know, I'm on a hospital bed, and I'm being wheeled through the halls of Harborview, being taken to the ICU where they hooked me up in a hospital bed to every monitor in the world where I cannot fart without the Pentagon knowing about it. Uh, and they told me, you definitely have had a heart attack and we're going to have to take care of things. So I watch in live time on an ultrasound as first they do a balloon angioplasty and then they actually float through my bloodstream 
a metal stamp that opens up the damaged part of my heart so it can keep beating. I'm watching this on the ultrasound and I'm simultaneously thinking, this is absolutely beautiful. I should write a poem about it. It's mortal and it's grand. And I'm simultaneously thinking, God damn it, I've already read that poem. Somebody beat me to it. So with that in mind, uh, you people are still alive. I don't know what happened with the Marilyn Murders yet. And I'm going to perform the second and last poem. Hey, look, after me, you don't have to worry about performing with flowers at your feet because they're already here. Um, like I said, with the clinic thing, I spent a lot of time waiting. And along the way, inscribed this. The clinic version. Waiting. Waiting for tomorrow. It could be such a song time. Waiting for forever a place I don't belong. I am waiting for that day. I might find myself so blessed. I'm all about today. I just might find some happy. Happiness. Waiting for tomorrow is waiting for forever. It could be such a song time, a place I don't belong. I am waiting for that day. I am all about today. I might find myself so blessed I just might find some happiness Patrick McKay Wednesday July 10 2014 the clinic version